Now we're joined now by Axios.com's Jonathan Swan. Hello, Jonathan. How are you? I'm great, you. How you doing? Good. You are covering a story that very few people are covering. Many Trump supporters always pointed out that while he was accused of being soft on Russia, he and Rick Grinnell and Mike Pompeo were actually very hard on aspects, including Nord Stream 2, the gas pipeline that Germany wanted to build with Russia. And we kept trying to get Angela Merkel not to build it. What's the word on Team Biden and this pipeline, Jonathan Swan? Well, this is, a, this is going to be one of the first major tests for Joe Biden of whether, you know, he's, he's, he uses very tough rhetoric against Russia, but whether he's actually willing to back it up with action. And the early signs are not good. Um, the first report that the, state, the Biden State Department sent to Congress singled out only one entity for uh, potential targeting for sanctions. It was an entity, it was a ship that, that Trump had already sanctioned. And so what we reported, what we broke on actually was the Ukrainians and the, and the Poles are very, very concerned that Biden is going to basically bend to Germany and not be willing to cross Angela Merkel in the way that Trump was. And what they want to hear from Biden is a really clear declaration that he's going to be willing to use all the tools of American power, including potentially sanctioning the German utility companies will ultimately be receiving this energy in order to stop the pipeline. They haven't heard those assurances yet, and it's been very testy behind the scenes. So it's about 90% a complete, according to your reporting, yep. Jonathan. Right. I was amused and uh, somewhat surprised to see President Zelensky, famous to Americans because of his uh, cameo in Impeachment 1.0, uh, is missing Donald Trump, it seems, because he's disappointed in Biden on Nord Stream 2. Well, it might be a stretch to say he's missing Donald Trump. I was in Ukraine, interviewed him, Zelensky, you know, three weeks ago. And, and I can tell you, he's not missing Donald Trump. But in this particular respect, he's certainly missing uh, Donald Trump's uh, resolve. Because as you pointed out accurately in your intro, on certain aspects of the relationship, particularly Nord Stream 2, the Trump administration made very clear that they were not going to lie down and allow it. And construction halted during the Trump administration. It halted and it resumed after Biden took office. So it's pretty clear that, you know, the Biden people are saying, you know, it's a bad deal. We don't support it. Well, uh, it's pretty clear that that the people involved in building the pipeline, the Russians, are not taking that rhetoric particularly seriously because construction resumed very promptly after Biden took what office. Will what will the effects of the completed pipeline be on Ukraine, Jonathan Swan? Oh, it's, hor it's, hor it's horrendous. So just, so just so you understand how the Ukraine, it's Ukraine, the, the gas passes through Ukraine right now, right? Which means two things. Number one, Ukraine, a very vulnerable democracy, which Russia has been trying to force into its orbit and, and squash. They get revenue, but... I think three, around $3 billion a year, but they also get leverage from this. It's really important in terms of them that they can have uh, some control in, in the energy coming towards Europe. Russia is trying to cut them out and isolate them as part of their campaign to isolate Ukraine from Europe and the West. Ukraine desperately wants to be part of NATO, desperately wants to be closer to Europe. Russia, by going straight to Germany, cutting this deal with Germany, is cutting out Ukraine. And just, just so you understand how galling it is to the Ukrainians to hear this sort of happy, or not happy talk, but sort of tough talk from the Germans, like you see at the UN, they're saying, condemning Russia for annexing parts of eastern Ukraine. Well, that rhetoric is so empty when, when, when Russia is, act, when Germany is actively doing a deal with Russia to completely screw Ukraine out of leverage and revenue. Uh, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan, what about the lethal aid? Because President Obama sent blankets. President Trump sent anti-tank weapons. What is President Biden sending or not sending to Ukraine? Well, I, I don't know that we that that's been established yet. And it's sort of, I'm not going to say it's, it's meaningless because it's not. It's an important signal, but it hasn't, I mean, you know, Biden, Trump sent javelins. It didn't change the dynamics on the ground. It's an important signal. This is really important, though. Nord Stream 2, right now, they have an opportunity right now to sanction the whole fleet, to lay down a red line, and to say, we are not going to accept this being built. And that's what the Ukrainians are really focused on right now. Obviously, they want the lethal aid. It's important. It's an important signal of support. I don't know where 
that's actually quite an easy thing for the Trump administration to do. They're not going to annoy Germany. I'm sorry, the Biden administration. They're not going to annoy Angela Merkel by sending some javelins to Ukraine. This is the real test because it, 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 it would be if they do fold on this and really not follow through, it would, it would be a sign that they're not willing to upset Angela Merkel in the service of pushing back on Russia and helping this very vulnerable democracy in Eastern Europe. I, I want to make sure people understand. If Nord Stream 2 gets built, Ukraine gets hurt big time. It's being pushed forward by the lame duck Angela Merkel, who is, I, what, she got six months left as chancellor, Jonathan Swan? Something like that. And does her successor, the, the new head of the CDU, the, the union, the Bavarian union and the CDU, does that person, that guy, oppose Nord Stream? Is this Merkel's last Well, it's hurrah? irrelevant, Hugh. It's irrelevant, Hugh. This, this thing will be built by the spring if, if they don't. I mean, we don't have time. I mean, this is, this is like right now, you know, if, if I, people I, I talk to who, who follow this very, very closely, the, the, the pipeline could be finished by the summer. By July, if this is not um, if this is not if there's not a really strong intervention right now, well, you're not, you know what, what's interesting to me: ninety percent built. Didn't uh, it, it's just so interesting to me? They stopped the Keystone pipeline, but they're not stopping the Nord Stream pipeline. So this is not consistent. Where's John Kerry? I mean, this is also not consistent with global warming. Who pulls the cord on this, Jonathan Swan? If Nord Stream is going to be stopped. Sorry, who? I, I'm, I'm not which sorry, which is it? A Department of State? Is it a, a White House call? Is it well, a? Uh, it needs to be what it needs to be. I mean, it, it's all based on um, American sort of the threat of American power. So, I mean, it, it's ultimately a Biden decision. He needs to make clear not just to Russia and, and the shipping fleets and all the insurance companies. Many of them have pulled out of this project, but to Germany, to Germany, that this is unacceptable, and he will not accept it and that he will be willing to do things that they they were worried that Trump would do such as take the very aggressive step of potentially sanctioning the German uh, utility German utility companies that will be receiving this gas and then ger it forces Germany to make a decision do I really want to upset America this much for this pipeline they can make that decision but right now that pressure doesn't really exist. They're not. Germany isn't having to make that kind of decision because the pressure just simply isn't there. So I want to frame this very clearly. Biden ran on being tough on Russia. He attacked, as did Nancy Pelosi. All roads lead to Russia with Trump. Right now is the first test on Russia, the first test on Germany. And you have great sources. I don't know if you're talking to Jake Sullivan as much as you talk to Robert O'Brien. But has anyone of any profile stepped up and said anything concrete about stopping Nord Stream 2? Well, the problem is they're saying the, the Biden people are all saying the same line, which is we're going to do everything to, to stop it. It's a bad deal. We don't support it. Blah, blah, blah. They're saying all of that publicly, you know, from the podium of the White House, Jen Psaki, but their actions are not reflecting that. And, and that was in the first report they sent to Congress. It's just not there that the congress the, the hawks in congress made not hawks bipartisan made very clear what they wanted through the latest piece of legislation that passed with the ndaa they want really tough aggressive sanctions to stop this pipeline and the state department had an opportunity to, to send out a list of targets and it was just that they just weren't there and it's not like they don't have the information I, again i've talked to people who have very very good information about the maritime tracking they know which ships are involved. This is not like some kind of mysterious thing. They've got very clear idea of who's involved. And so there's real questions now being asked on Capitol Hill. Why haven't, why haven't they moved faster? You said it was the first test. I sort of said that too. It's sort of the second test because one of the first things Biden did was renew the arms control agreement with Russia immediately. Five years. No worries. Boom. And the Russians were very happy because about that. Their, because so, they're moving their medium-range missiles everywhere under the existing uh, uh, look, uh, deal. Look, Wendy Sherman is the Deputy Secretary of State. She has never negotiated a tough deal with any of our adversaries. She's very hard on our allies, and Tony Blinken goes along. I want to talk to you about the Saudi King call. We are going to get a report on 
the murder of Khashoggi. And it's going to dirty up the crown prince. We know that. Joe Biden called the king. The readout doesn't say anything about Khashoggi, right? You know, Hugh, I'm embarrassed to say I haven't read the readout, so I can't. It uh, doesn't. I, I'm uh, sure it, you're it, right. I'll it, take your. I'll take your. Yeah, your it doesn't. Uh, I've been focused on this. Okay, fair enough. I, I'm just. I'm just here to tell you everything that the media said was wrong with Trump is actually wrong with Biden. And we're not going to get the same kind of media coverage, Jonathan, because this is not Axios. I think Axios is pretty good, and you're very good. But media generally likes Biden, and they don't cover him the same way they cover Trump. It's that simple. Well, I will speak for uh, myself, and uh, and I just that's not true. I mean, I'm that's not, not true about you. I I, I, I exempt you and Axios. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah, yeah. I just think that the yeah. media generally is going to give him a pass on this. And your article is the only one I've seen on this story. The well, only one. i coming here, so, so stay will. tuned. I will. I will. Jonathan <laughs> Swan, good to talk to you. Axios AM. Go to Jonathan Swan. Follow him on Twitter. Get some serious hard news reporting on uh, Team Biden. Because